Hello and welcome back to this episode of Kingsport Blog Video Update. I'm Jeff Fleming, Assistant City Manager for Development here in Kingsport, and uh, the Move to Kingsport program has just celebrated its sixth year in existence. And the program was created as a partnership between the Kingsport Chamber and the City of Kingsport to help package and market uh, Kingsport's residential amenities to newcomers. Uh, we found that uh, Kingsport is a uh, difficult market to understand when it comes to uh, development because many places have uh, a center city and then they have an interstate and so it's very natural just to look at the interstate and look at the uh, new subdivisions that are popping up along the interstate and just focus in that area. Uh, in Kingsport we have a very balanced situation where we have residential opportunities all around town and uh, many of those are uh, spread out and uh, so you can't just go to one section of town and see everything. So. Uh, we're trying to help uh, package that and explain it to newcomers and um, with the most recent annual report which completes our sixth year our out-of-state relocations are at an all-time high and remember that that occurs during a time when we've had a pretty serious economic downturn nationwide so uh, that makes it even even more impressive the move to Kingsport program uh, also attracts and focuses on folks from less than 35 miles away which would be basically the metropolitan Tri-Cities area and of course that continues to be the largest volume producer for folks moving uh, to Kingsport. So for the past three years again during the economic downturn uh, they've been our highest years in the past uh, six years so uh, we've seen continued activity of folks moving uh, from other parts of the Tri-Cities to Kingsport. City Manager John Campbell uh, constantly reminds us that we are trying to put together amenities that are very unique and that would cause people to choose Kingsport as a place to live, not just to work. We also saw this year for the first time in four years an increase in new construction or moving into new construction. A lot of times folks assume that if you're a newcomer to town that you are uh, you're going to be moving into a new construction home and that's not always the case. In fact more than 90 percent of folks that move to Kingsport move into an existing home and they invest in upgrading it and uh, making it you know, their own. But we did see an uptick in moving into new construction this year. Uh, we also saw a corresponding uh, downtrend slightly in moving into new con new construction, I mean into existing structures, excuse me. According to the University of North Carolina at Wilmington, uh, each newcomer that comes to your community generates about $25,000 in consumer spending. And the St. Louis Federal Reserve says that consumer, consumer spending uh, consists of almost 25% of our total economy. So it's very important to have growth, not too fast, where it's going to break down your infrastructure and cause traffic problems and that sort of thing, but you need to have enough growth to make sure that there is continued uh, sales volume and uh, purchases from newcomers. And to that end, our uh, retail sales tax collections are also the highest they've been in the past six years. And again, remember, this has been a uh, pretty tough economic time nationwide, but we've continued to thrive locally. And when you consider what people are buying when, they, when they're doing that consumer spending, it, it includes things, it's not just clothing and retail, it's, also, it's things like medical, pharmacy, finance, insurance, real estate, and, uh, and retail and food, of course. So uh, it's, it's all categories. We also are going to be featured in Ideal Living Magazine, which is a national publication that uh, focuses on retirement opportunities nationwide, mostly in the Sun Belt states. Uh, this year, Kingsport is going to be the, uh, the location of the National Convention of the American Association of Retirement Communities. Now, we don't strictly re uh, target only retirees in Kingsport, but that is one segment that we try to appeal to. Uh, so we'll have that at MetaView October 24th through the 26th. So we look forward to that uh, coming to town. And Ideal Living Magazine is, is very integral integrally related to the uh, American Association of Retirement Communities and uh, so the Board of Directors members have been asked to submit uh, uh, articles for the national publication so I was asked to do that and was, was happy to do that. That was about a 700 word explanation of how inland communities that don't have gated age restricted retirement communities can compete in today's environment and so what we're finding is that boomer retirees uh, are looking for just a house in a community, a real community with all different kinds of age groups. They're, they're very wary of being uh, labeled as their parents in moving to Florida into a, 
a restricted condominium association or something like that. They just want to live in a normal community with uh, you know great opportunities, great amenities. So Kingsport and cities like Kingsport uh, show very well uh, in this type of economy right now. So um, we're kind of being used as a poster child to inspire other inland communities that you don't have to be Hilton Head, you don't have to have a Del Webb Sun City in order to be successful in retiree recruitment. During the past 12 months, uh, from July of 2011 to June 2012, there were 1,401 new families in Kingsport, and there were 1,791 existing Kingsport residents that moved to a new location in the Kingsport area. So you have both of that activity going on. So the net difference for the year is about 505 families. And so if you multiply 2.3 persons per household times 505 families, times the $25,000 impact I just described, that comes up to $29 million in uh, consumer spending from those newcomers. So you can see right away how important it is uh, to have that uh, working to your advantage. Uh, during the, t the downturn, we've continued to see out-of-state relocations up 14% in Kingsport. Uh, just in the past 12-month period, we've seen 490 families move from out of state, and they, they have come from 43 different states. Again, that's just during the past 12-month period. When you look at the total history of the program, we've had 2,786 families that have moved from all 50 states uh, during that time period. So uh, it comes as no surprise that Virginia is the number one uh, with 920 families, uh, but it's followed by Florida at 308, then North Carolina at 217, then Georgia, Kentucky, South Carolina, Texas, Ohio, and California rounding out the top 10. When you look at the places that are moving to Kingsport, um, there have been 1,371 different places, and by, by place I mean zip codes. So if, if you have a zip code that has a corresponding place name, that's what I'm talking about when I say 1,371 places. And it may surprise you to find that the number one place moving to Kingsport is Johnson City and Gray. Uh, they share a zip code. And then number two is Churchill. Number three is Bluntville slash Boon Lake. Number four is Jonesboro. Uh, number five is Mount Carmel. Number six, Bristol. And number seven, Fall Branch. Um, number eight, Gate City. Number nine, Rogersville. And rounding out the top ten is Knoxville. Now, similarly, there are 1,113 places that when Kingsporters moved away from Kingsport that they moved to. So it's a two-way street. Um, and again, our number one place that Kingsporters moved was also Johnson City and Gray. So the highest traffic activity is between Kingsport and Johnson City. Uh, number two where Kingsporters moved was Bluntville Boone Lake. Number three, Churchill. Number four, Fall Branch. Number five, Jonesboro. Number six, Mount Carmel. Number seven, Gate City. Number eight, Knoxville. Number nine, Bristol. And number 10, Rogersville. So uh, a minute ago I mentioned that the highest activity comes within 35 miles uh, in the Tri-Cities metro area. And as you can see from that list of names I just mentioned, uh, that is consistent with that uh, um, what I was describing. So let's look real quickly at uh, where we also track the, um, the net difference between communities. So in other words, we look at it, number of people that move from that community to Kingsport and the number of people from Kingsport that move to that community and that creates the net difference. So when you look at it that way, um, of that same uh, list of of people moving to Kingsport, the number one by difference is Bristol. So for example, we had 276 uh, folks from Bristol, Tennessee that moved to Kingsport, and we had 167 from Kingsport that moved to Bristol, Tennessee. So the net difference is 109 to Kingsport's favor. Uh, number two is Churchill, three Gate City, five, four Rogersville, five Johnson City. So uh, again, just a different way of looking at it. Then when you look at where Kingsporters moved, where we lost by net difference, uh, we had 261 Kingsport residents that moved to Fall Branch, but we only had 411 from Fall, Br from Fall Branch, or excuse me, we had 267 from Fall Branch moved to Kingsport, and we had 411, 411 from Kingsport moved to Fall Branch. So the net difference was 150. And again, that's during that six, uh, six year period. Now, understandably, Small Branch is a much smaller geography. So there's fewer people that could even possibly move from Fall Branch to Kingsport. And there is a significant number of Kingsporters that could move to Fall Branch. So uh, again, it's, it's, it, it's just another way of looking at the data. 
uh, Bluntville Boone Lake was number two, um, Knoxville, Jonesboro, uh, Raleigh, and so forth. And then finally, uh, we look at metropolitan areas that are, are moving to Kingsport. And uh, we're able to take the data and uh, correlate it to a national database that puts every zip code into its corresponding federally designated metropolitan statistical area, which is an MSA. So the number one uh, would be the Kingsport-Bristol MSA, uh, and you have to understand we, d we subtract folks that already live within Kingsport zip codes. So there are 2,709 families uh, from elsewhere in the Kingsport-Bristol MSA that moved to Kingsport, and that uh, would include Hawkins County, Scott County, Washington County, Virginia, and Sullivan County. Then in the Johnson City Metropolitan St Statistical Area, which includes Washington County, Tennessee, Carter County, and Unicoi County, we had 1,543. And then it, the, the third is Greenville, four Knoxville, five Morristown. Uh, but the number one out-of-state relocation is Tampa Bay, Florida. Number two is Washington, D.C., and followed by Chattanooga, Atlanta, Miami, New York. Uh, Asheville, Charlotte, and Orlando, and Virginia Beach. So again, you get a, a feel for the diversity uh, of folks that are moving to Kingsport. Now, if you want to review this full report and kind of slice it and dice it yourself, uh, you can find that at development.kingsporttn.gov slash demographics. And again, this is your weekly update, and I look forward to 